Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss what is data type, what are the different categories of the data types we have. Before starts today's session, let us try to recall what have we discussed in our last video. What is the need of static variables? How to create and access static variables? Can we access a static variable with help of the object? When do static variables gets created and destroyed? Does the static variable have a default value? All these were covered in detail in the last session. If you haven't watched that, please watch that. The link is given in the description box. After watching this video, you will get the knowledge about these points. Why do we need to specify data type in Java? What type of the information will be sent to the compiler when we declare data type of a variable in Java? What are the different categories of data types we have in Java? What is the major difference between primitive and non-primitive data types? Let us start our discussion with why do we need to specify data type? What happens? if you are not specifying the data type in our program. The major reason behind that is Java is statically typed programming language. What does it mean is Java compiler checks the type of the variable at the compilation time. Whenever you are trying to compile your program, at that point of time, Java compiler checks the data type of the every variable. If Java compiler is not able to find the data type, that raises an error. Because Java is statically typed programming language. Static means compile time. That is the reason you will get compilation error if you are not specifying the data type of the variable. Due to this, in the declaration statement, whenever you are declaring a variable, you must declare the data type of that variable. Then you can write the variable name and value. Let me show it practically. See this example. In this example, I declared a variable number num and I am assigning the value 10. But here, I am not declaring the data type of the variable num. Let us try to execute it. Read this. number cannot be resolved to a variable. Simply, every variable must be declared along with the data type because Java is a statically typed programming language. Then you may get the doubt. Is every programming language statically typed? The answer is no. We have some programming languages. Those are dynamically typed. Python is a dynamically typed programming language. I will show you that also. See this, this is the code of Python. In this code, I am not specifying the data type of the number. Without specifying the data type, I created a variable, I assigned some value. After that, I want to print the value of that variable. This is the Python code. If you don't have any idea about the Python, don't worry about that. My intention is, I want to show you dynamically typed nature of Python. Let us run it. Now see, we are getting the output 10 without facing any errors because Python is a dynamically typed programming language. The meaning is, even though you are not specifying the data type before the variable name, dynamically means runtime based on the value you are assigning to that variable, the data type will be determined. This nature is called dynamically typed. but Java is statically typed. The data type will be checked at the compile time. That is the reason you must specify the data type. I think the point is clear now. Then how to declare a variable? The syntax is we must write first data type space variable name assignment operator and you can write the value you want to store into the variable. Now. Let us try to understand what is data type. Actually, data type is a property of a variable. When we declare 
data type of a variable in our program that data type tells to the compiler or interpreter about the three important points those are first one is what type of the values that variable can store if you want to store numbers you can store into the variable if you want to store names you can store into the variable so whatever the data you want to store based on that you must to specify the relevant to data type before that variable name for example if you want to store numbers into your variable name you must to specify your data type as integer if you want to store names into your variable you must to specify data type of the variable is string type second point type of the operations can be performed based on the data type you declare the type of the operations will be decided suppose i declared two variables are integer type nothing but numbers so i can perform addition operation multiplication operation division operation and so on because those are the numbers if i declare a variable as a string type nothing but that can store one name can we perform multiplication operations on the names no because if you want to store a name into your variable you must specify that variable as a string type the data type is string that is the reason you cannot perform arithmetic operations on your string type variable finally you must understand that based on the data type of the variables types of the operations can be performed on the variable will be decided third point is range of value that variable can store we have different data types based on your requirement you must select which data type is appropriate to your requirement suppose i want to store two digit number we have some type of the data type if you want to store five digit number we must select another appropriate data type like this depends on your range of the values you must select a relevant data type if you declare a small data type which is sufficient to store two digit but you are trying to store 10 digit number that will raise an error because the range of the variable can be decided based on the data type only so as of now what is data type is clear i hope now let us try to see what are the different categories we have in the data types we have two categories in the data types those are primitive data types and non primitive data types let us try to understand what is primitive what is non primitive what are the differences between these two primitive data types are pre defined already defined by the programming language these are also called built in data types because those are already developed by the developer those are already available to you that is the reason these are called pre defined data types or built in data types primitive data types always start with a lower case letter i will show you what are the different types of the primitive data types we have if you observe that every primitive data type name starts with lower case letter these data types have fixed sizes defined by the language the meaning is every primitive data type occupies some size all are fixed by the developer of the language example size of the int variable is 4 bytes that is fixed we are not able to change that we are not able to increase the size of the integer variable or decrease the size of that next important point is primitive data types have their corresponding wrapper classes what is wrapper class how to implement that we will see in the coming videos java maintains wrapper classes corresponding to all primitive data types see this table we have eight different types of the primitive data types in java see the data type name is byte but the wrapper class related to this byte is also byte but the first letter is capital letter and short is a primitive data type name the corresponding wrapper class name is short with s is a capital letter 
लाइक प्रॉबली वट एवर द डेटा टाइप नेम वी हैव द सेम थिंग विल बी मेन्टेन एज ए रापर क्लास नेम बट द चेंज इज द फस्ट क्यार्टर इज कैपिटल लेटर एक्सेप्ट इंटीजर एंड क्यार्टर अब्सर्व दिस द प्रिमिटिव डेटा टाइप नेम इज ई एन टी बट द रापर क्लास नेम इज इंटीजर फुल नेम वेर ई इज कैपिटल कमिंग टू दि क्यार्टर वी नीड टू यूज क्यार एज ए प्रिमिटिव डेटा टाइप but the relevant wrapper class is character all these are the corresponding wrapper classes of primitive data types next point is these primitive data types store the actual value directly in the memory hence it is also called value types one more important property of primitive data type is all the primitive data type stores single value primitive data types cannot store collection of the values see the example data type is int variable name is number assignment 10 then what happens internally is a memory is allocated for this statement for that memory location we are giving the name number this is a variable name what is the memory allocated to your variable within that memory only the single value is stored this is the nature of primitive data type that's why primitive data types are also called value types because value is directly stored in that memory location only coming to the non primitive data types these data types are actually not defined by the programming language but these are created by the programmer whenever we are working with java programming language as a programmers we need to define it we need to create this these are not defined by the language these non primitive data types are also called reference variables or object references because this is very important point these non primitive data types store references or memory addresses that point to the location where the object is stored the value not stored directly into the non primitive variables this is the major difference between primitive and non primitive data types now see this example in this statement i created a string variable string is a non primitive data type s1 is a variable of string type assignment new string and the value i want to store in that variable is hello forget about the complete syntactical rules we will discuss it in detail later but now we are focusing on the point how the values are maintained internally when we write this statement what happens internally is observe the right hand side of the assignment operator new string hello when this is being executed internally a object is created and the value hello is stored in that object in the memory see a object is created in the memory and within that object we have the value hello the memory address of that object is 100101 then when the left hand side of the assignment operator is being executed that is string s1 a variable s1 is created then we are assigning this object value to the variable s1 this s1 gives the reference where the actual object is available in the memory see now within the s1 we are not storing the value hello the s1 is tells about the address where the actual value is available this is the reason non primitive data types are also called reference variables because one more important point is these variables are stored in the stack memory and every object is created in the heap memory next point the default value of non primitive reference variables is null 
non primitive types starts with an upper case letter if you observe string class the first character should be in the capital letter but all the primitive cases starts with lower case letter that is also one of the difference size of non primitive depends on the programmer in the previous example we have seen string example depending on the value you want to assign to that string variable the size will be vary suppose if you want to assign hello that may occupies x bytes if i want to store hello how are you that takes more memory than the previous one the sizes of the non primitives are not fixed depending on your requirement that may be changed that depends on programmer a programmer requirement in reference types data is stored as an object in heap memory and variable is stored in the stack memory we have seen just now it now let us see what are the different non primitive data types available in java arrays strings classes object interfaces all these are non primitive data types all these are very important topics we will cover each and every topic in the coming videos in the same way let us see what are the primitive data types available in java major categories are boolean character and numerical types the numbers can be of two types integer values or decimal values if you want to store integer values you may use byte short int long data types if you want to maintain decimal values you may use float and double data types in this video i want to show the list of the primitive data types only all these will be clear with practical examples in the next video check your knowledge what have you learned from this video why do we need to specify data type in java what type of the information will be sent to the compiler when we declare data type of a variable what are the different categories of the data types we have in java what are the differences between primitive and non primitive data types if this video is useful to you do subscribe the channel to get more useful videos watch like and share the videos thank you